For years, people have studied bacteria as though they're solitary organisms uh, living in liquid, and a lot of antibiotic resistance research is focused on how bacteria grow in sort of a shaking flask. But what I want to show today is this is not how bacteria really live, and indeed, if we understand how they live, it opens up a whole range of new possibilities for treating uh, uh, bacteria. The way that bacteria really live are in dense and genetically diverse communities containing many strains and species, so much so they're often called microbial jungles. The movie behind is a movie from my lab showing a uh, bacterial colony growing and you can see this is a typical mode of growth and the bacteria are very dense and you can also see sort of spatial structure where you have different genotypes positioning in different parts of the colony. This is how bacteria really live and they live like this in soil, um, on roots, uh, on industrial surfaces and in indeed inside you, uh, living inside your gut and, and, and other parts of your body. What we want to understand then is how bacteria exist in these communities and today I'm going to discuss um, three different uh, 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 modes of communication, cooperation and competition in these communities and show how, by understanding bacteria in this way, we get new ideas for treating them. Cooperation in bacteria occurs by secreting molecules into the environment, and many different bacteria do this. So they release mo molecules into the environment and these molecules help them to grow. So in the example shown here, again from my lab, the yellow bacteria are releasing an enzyme that detoxifies the environment around them and actually detoxifies an antibiotic. In the colony you can see on the right, the bacteria, uh, which are yellow, are releasing this enzyme and it allows them to work collectively and outcompete the red bacteria. So here's another example of cooperation <coughs> from one of our experiments. So in this case, on the right, the strain is releasing this time a molecule that allows the bacteria to swim and spread out across the plate. The strain on the left doesn't have this molecule and can't swim. However, what hopefully what you can see is when the two meet, something rather amazing happens and the strain that doesn't have the molecule can now swim because it's being cooperated with by the other. The idea then is if we understand the bacteria need cooperative uh, products to grow, can we inhibit their cooperation and thereby inhibit their growth? And we're doing just this with salmonella and we're inhibiting salmonella with a drug and preventing it from growing on surfaces via a mechanism which it needs to grow which is using a secretion, so it's one of these cooperative systems. So we can inhibit their growth, but this is the clever part. So you can imagine now what happens if a resistant strain evolves. So this, in the middle uh, uh, diagram, you can see a, a bright yellow cell, and this is the resistant strain. But this strain is cooperating with the cells around it, and it but it's only the one paying the cost. So it will get outcompeted. And what we find is when we treat uh, salmonella with a drug that acts in this way, we don't see resistance evolution. Another interesting thing that bacteria do is they communicate with one another. So they secrete small molecules into the environment, and they sense these small molecules. And by by doing so, they're able to detect the density of the cells around them. So they're actually sensing, they're counting their numbers. It's often called quorum sensing in bacteria, from quora, meaning a, a, a number or count. So this cartoon shows how this works. So on the left, you have low density, low amount of signal. In the middle, the signal's gone up because you've got more cells, and now they activate various behaviors. And in this case, what they're doing is they're activating an attack mechanism which will actually cause disease. And so, and cause virulent disease. And so the idea here is then if we can inhibit their, their, their communication, we can inhibit their, them causing disease. So very finally then, bacteria also compete, and indeed that's where antibiotics come from. So antibiotics evolved, first of all, as a mechanism by which bacteria will fight with each other. And what we found recently is that if you uh, uh, fight bacteria, different strains, they make new antibiotics. They'll often upregulate the antibiotics and we'll see new things. So in this uh, experiment from my lab, the green in the colony is indicating how much of an antibiotic it's making. At the top, we put it against a passive strain and it doesn't make much. At the bottom, we put it against a, another aggressive strain and you can see it lights up and they both fight. So bacteria, like us, don't like being attacked, and if they're attacked, they attack back. We can use this then to make them make new antibiotics. This is an example from another lab, from Traxler's lab, and the red pigment in this is, a, is an antibiotic made by one of uh, the soil bacteria. So the idea then is if we compete bacteria together, they'll start to make new products and new antibiotics, and we'll be able to discover new ways to treat disease. To sum up then, the idea then I just want to present is that bacteria don't live alone swimming in liquid. They live in dense and diverse communities, as I said, these microbial jungles. And we need to understand how they cooperate, communicate, and indeed compete in these groups if we're going to understand how to treat them and treat them wisely. And more specifically, what we want to be doing is inhibiting cooperation and communication in the pathogens, but augmenting uh, competition in the bacteria that actually help us, because many of the bacteria that we carry are actually beneficial. To sum up then, the key thing I want to get across is that bacteria are highly social organisms and if we understand this, we can engineer their societies for our benefit. Thank you.